And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords. Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Thursday. Happy first day of February. <laughs> Already, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a moment, God, doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens fast. Is that a sneak peek of what this year is going to be? Just yes. flying by <laughs> yes. without notice. Yeah. <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> All right. Let's get to keyword news. We're going to try to clarify some of the major headlines for our listeners. I mean, it is increasingly hard to keep up with all the headlines when time is just slipping through our fingers. Yeah. So let's get to it. Our first keyword of the day. Irrational North Korea. So President Yoon has warned that North Korea could stage provocations and spread fake news to interfere in April's general elections. He also blasted the regime leaders for his nuclear ambitions and increased provocations. What did the president have to say? Yeah, so he made the remarks as he convened an annual meeting of the Central Integrated Defense Council that brings together the military, government and civil defense uh, entities. He noted that for the past 70 years, the North Korean regime has consistently sought to bring down South Korea's liberal democratic system. Uh, he added that in years with important political events, uh, it has always carried out social disturbances as well as psychological warfare, such as spreading fake news and provocations as well and you stress that this year would be no different especially with the april general elections coming up and now he warns that uh, he warns against border provocations and military provocations as well as drone infiltrations and fake news as well as cyber attacks and he emphasized the importance of being ready for both physical threats and protecting the country's democratic values and Yoon also noted that the North Korean regime is an irrational group which has legalized the preemptive use of nuclear weapons to become the only country to do so in the world. And he added that such a move is only recklessly aimed at maintaining the family succession of the totalitarian regime. Mm -hmm. uh, now, during the meeting, they also discussed ways to improve emergency alerts, make sure there are enough space, uh, safe places rather for people to go uh, during attacks and protect important national systems from uh, cyber attacks as well. We've seen precedents of this before uh, by North Korea. And of course, um, it's highly expected as well with the elections coming up. And mm. we're already seeing frequent uh, military provocations as well with the success uh, successive cruise missile provocations that we saw uh Last month, it is now, yeah. Uh, for those who tune in regularly, we must sound like broken records, but it's certainly not the first time or an isolated case of election interference or potential for it. So I think being mindful of that is, is quite important. And the president is very wary of it. And there you have it. He emphasized it in his speech. We'll leave it there for now so we can move on to our second keyword of the day. Rate freeze. Is the economy in trouble and is that going to be the projection for the entire year? Because there's a great deal of emphasis on the economy in today's keyword news. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Uh, starting with the U.S. Fed's uh, decision to freeze the rates. Uh, the Fed has maintained its benchmark interest rate in a range of 5.25 to 5.5 percent. It says there are no plans yet that is any way to cut rates with inflation still running above the central bank's target. What's the latest, Adam? Yeah, so it's kind of a wait and see uh, kind of move, if you will, by the Fed. Uh, this decision marks the fourth time since uh, September of last year that the Fed has maintained the same interest level, uh, interest rate level. Now, with this decision, the interest rate difference between the US and South Korea, which has a rate of three and a half percent, remains up to two percent. Now, the Fed explained that the economy is steadily growing and while job growth has slowed, it remains robust. They noted that inflation has decreased compared to last year, but still continues to rise. Now, the Fed aims to achieve a stable job market and a 2% inflation rate target, but recognizes the current economic uncertainties and the ongoing risk of inflation. Now, Fed Chair Jerome Powell pushed back on market expectations for a cut uh, in interest rates as early as March, that's what uh, uh, a few uh, economic experts and anal analysts, analysts uh, are predicting. And he told reporters that's probably not going to be the case. Uh, now, he said that the Fed didn't need to see better data, but just more good data and a continuation <laughs> of the data. Uh, and basically was saying that it's not enough uh, to go on the data of the past six months to kind of 
gauge on how the economy is going to do uh, for the foreseeable future anyway. Uh, now, he noted that the central bank needed to see uh, more evidence as well of inflation dropping. So mm -mm. they're holding pat on the rate, but uh, yeah, don't expect to see any rate cuts anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So and uh, usually the South Korea uh, central bank usually follows in the footsteps of the Fed mm -hmm. uh, because they are wary of that rate gap between them. So it seems likely that um, the South Korean uh, central bank might uh, freeze rates as well. But we'll have to see. All right. So looking for consistency there, right? Consistently good mm -hmm. data. OK, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Senior economic dialogue. I only chuckle because good is such a vague word, but we'll yeah. leave it there for now. OK, <laughs> so the Korean government has asked the United States to quickly give tax breaks and subsidies to Korean companies investing in the U.S. A call was made during the annual senior economic dialogue held in Seoul. Can you run us through what was discussed? Sure. So the second vice foreign minister, uh, Kang in -sun, delivered the position to her uh, U.S. counterpart Jose Fernandez, uh, she highlighted the role of Korean companies in creating jobs and strengthening supply chains in the U.S. Uh, she urged the U.S. to provide these companies with matching tax credits and subsidies without delay. Uh, she also talks about the U.S. law that doesn't allow subsidies for electric vehicles using materials or parts from certain foreign countries, uh, foreign entities of concern, the U.S. Uh, calls them. Now, this law affects Korean car and battery makers who uh, rely heavily on China still. Now, the Korean government has asked the U.S. to consider the situation of these companies and help them adjust to the new rules. Now, Korea has expressed concerns over the rules under the IRA on promoting green technology, saying it is difficult to drastically reduce uh, dependence on China within the time frame given under the IRA. Now, the meeting also covered cooperation in areas like digital technology and climate change as well uh, in the Indo-Pacific region. All right, let's move on uh, to our fourth key word, a deficit in tax revenue from last year, our fourth key word of the day. Tax revenue shortfall. So the Korean government saw its tax revenue fall by more than 50 trillion won in 2023. That's compared with a year earlier, marking the highest ever tax revenue shortfall. Tell us the details. Yeah, so finance ministry data shows that the government collected 344.1 trillion won in taxes in 2023. That's down 13 0.1% uh, from a year earlier. Now, compared with the ministry's forecast made in the 2023 budget planning, the country suffered a record 56.4 trillion one of shortfall, the highest ever. Now, the decline in the yearly tax revenue was due mainly to the fall in corporate taxes collected and income taxes, of course, amid an in, uh, economic slowdown. Now, weak corporate earnings in 2022 and the first half of 2023 brought down corporate taxes prepaid to August, leading to a 23.2 trillion won on-year decrease in corporate tax. The capital gains tax revenue dropped by 14.7 trillion one on year following the slowdown in the property market. There's been fewer transactions and of course, hence there'll be fewer taxes related to that mm -hmm. collected. Value added tax or VAT revenue dipped by just under 8 trillion one on year and customs revenue dropped by 3 trillion one due to a decrease in imports. Uh, traffic, energy and environment tax revenue decreased by 300 billion one, backed by an extended fuel tax cut scheme. Uh, it is the third straight year for the government's tax revenue evaluation to have missed the mark with a double digit error rate. Mm. Now, meanwhile, the government has projected uh, for there to be 367.4 trillion one in tax revenue in this year's budget plan. That is up 23 trillion one. But of course, we'll have to see on how much the government actually collects uh, by the end of the year. Now, yet, the projection for this year's tax revenue remains gloomy as the economy has not fully picked up yet. So uh, there are some projections that it will pick up from this year, but we've been saying that, as I mentioned, last year and probably the year before <laughs> as well. Sure. Last year was meant to be a kind of a, a year for rebound, but it has spilled over into 2024. Now, though exports have shown signs of a rebound, domestic demand continues to 
remain lukewarm amid the relatively uh, high interest rates. So, yeah, people are just not spending as much as they used to. Um, so mm. a, lot, a lot of people who uh, run businesses, uh, uh, close associates and friends of mine, mm -hmm. they're struggling, uh, basically, because, yeah, mm. just... No consumption is being uh, made at the moment. So. I mean, things overall cost more from a consumer perspective. If I have the same amount of wands uh, to spend and everything is a little bit more pricey, you, you've got to crunch somewhere, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. All right. We'll leave it there for now so we can move on to our final keyword of the day. Consumption tax discount. So the aim seems to be trying to reduce citizens' financial burden and maybe spruce up people's livelihoods. We'll see. The government is set to propose a new plan that will provide significant tax benefits for people replacing old cars with new ones. Not everyone can benefit from the change. So let's clarify. What can we expect? Right. That is uh, only part of the kind of <laughs> grand scheme right, of right. Uh, tax benefit plans. But uh, yes, owners of cars... Uh, of over 10 years, so registered before December 31st, 2013, will receive a 70% tax cut on individual consumption tax and other related taxes when they buy a new passenger car, but that excludes diesel cars. Now, also, the annual contribution limit for uh, individual savings accounts, or ISAs, or ISAs, will increase from 20 million won to 40 million won. The tax exemption limit on interest and dividend income will go up from 2 million won to 5 million won uh, for low income earners and those in agriculture and fishing. This limit will increase from 4 million won to 10 million won. Uh, now, the government also plans to cancel the financial investment income tax that's scheduled to start next year. And now, this is tax on basically on earnings from investments like stocks and bonds. Uh, also, purchasing unsold homes in non-capital regions after construction will not be counted in the total number of homes owned when calculating capital gains tax and comprehensive real estate tax. Mm. Uh, if credit card usage in the first half of the year increases by more than 5% compared to the same period last year, the additional amounts will receive a 20% income tax deduction. These measures are basically follow-ups to the economic policies announced earlier this year uh, and will be proposed as legislative bills. So there's a lot, uh, a, a long list, basically, of tax benefits uh, that the government has planned, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll have to see uh, which one of those comes into fruition uh, because, of course, there are legislative hurdles to mm -hmm. overcome in Parliament especially, but uh, that's what the government is proposing um, but of course, uh, don't get your hopes up that all of these tax benefits will certainly be made. But um, yeah, in terms of the individual consumption tax on these cars, a lot of uh, that has been going on for quite a while. Mm -hmm. In fact, so if you purchase a new car, you will get that, probably that tax benefit. But for the others, we'll have to see. I was going to say, if I was inclined to, I don't know, spend more and rely on retail therapy and spend more <laughs> than last year, I should wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you do want to go all out and uh, spend big, hold on just a little bit and see how, how uh, things play out in terms of the tax front anyway. <laughs> Honestly, you can spend as much as you want, listeners. It's just that if you're relying on the tax break, we're saying it's not final just yet. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. We'll see you tomorrow. You're very welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.